Welcome back to Corbin AI, where I'm showing you daily how to start leveraging artificial intelligence in your personal and your business life. And you clicked on today's video because I'm going to show you how to automatically take invoices like this and push it towards a Excel sheet using ChatGPT. This came from a suggestion from one of our viewers here. So let's go to dive in today. It's going to be a pretty powerful tutorial. We've been doing a lot of tutorials lately on the powers of ChatGPT, Zapier, and automation when it comes to PDF specifically. So if that's a big part of your business or your personal life, just type in Corbin AI PDF or just check out our recent videos here. So we're doing a ton of stuff when it comes to PDFs and how to manipulate the data. So in this one, we're going to deal with the invoice as we got from one of our viewers here asking essentially if I went ahead and, you know, talked. And we found out that they're looking for taking uh you know amounts dates client info from a bill pdf and pushing it towards an excel sheet so in today's video we're going to do that we're going to use a slightly different software here we're going to use google drive and google sheets as we're able to access the api better in this context let's go to jump in okay so i'm going to go ahead and start off by uploading our example pdf here let's go to check it out together so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on here when i was originally going to make this tutorial i was going to do it with one light item but i realized that people are going to want to know from multiple line items so i went ahead and ensured that we have multiple line items in this invoice this is a pseudo invoice here uh for a uh, fake client called james brown and we got two different invoices for this we've got website development seo work and then a bunch of information associated with this pdf so the way we're going to do this is we're going to have one drive folder that's going to be for when i just drag in the invoice everything else incurs we automatically add it to an Excel sheet and, you know, kind of proceed from there. So let's go to jump over to our other folder here, which we call sheet made. You can name these however you want. And we went ahead and made our Excel sheet. So what we're going to grab, and you can go ahead and grab whatever specific for your invoice and what you care about. But in our context, we're going to grab the invoice number, the bill to the customer email services, total due date, and if the service is complete or not. In most contexts, it's going to say no, because we are just starting the service. So to start off, let's go ahead and open up Zapier. Okay, so I'm over in Zapier. I'm going to go ahead and create a new Zap. All those Zaps are from our channel here. We have over 900 videos when it comes to automation, ChatGPT, and other stuff when it comes to AI. I'm going to go ahead and rename this Zap to uh, Auto PDF Invoice. And I think, actually, I can't. So I'm going to go ahead and have to go ahead and share the code in the comments down below. Zapier doesn't allow the sharing of Zaps that have code yet, but you'll be able to copy it directly from the description down below or the comment. So from here, though, we're just going to set up simply. So if you're using Dropbox, you'd use a similar trigger here. For Google Drive, it is just adding a new file, more specifically, a new file to the folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up here if it wants to work today. All right, so let's go ahead and choose the trigger of new file and folder. Then you're going to choose your associated email account here. For us, we're going to do our courses account. We're going to hit continue here, and then we're going to choose our folder. So this is going to be the folder that you are going to drag your invoice into. Now, if you're using stuff like Stripe, or whatever invoice software you're using, you could actually automate that process as well. So where, you know, once the invoice is created on Stripe, you could automatically add it to a Google Drive folder, therefore triggering this. There's gonna be a lot more nuance to this, but for now, we're just gonna assume that you're just dragging the PDF into the folder. I'm gonna continue here. I'm gonna test this trigger, and we should get our new input here of invoice, as that's what I called it. There we go. I may continue here. And next, we're gonna have to go ahead and do another Google Drive here for the purpose of actually converting this uh, PDF into a doc file. The reason we're gonna do that is because how the, as a dot PDF using Zapier, we're not actually able to access the underlying data found within that file. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna do upload file here, just make sure you choose the same account. And as you'll see, the file exists, but not sh is not shown. Therefore, we can't actually access the, the text that is found within the PDF, which would be a issue. In order to circumnavigate that, we're gonna do file here. We're gonna make sure that we're converting it. We're gonna say true. And we're gonna go ahead and name it to whatever you want the new file to be called. For our context, we're gonna keep the same title and maybe we'll add a hyphen here or a, a vertical hyphen. And we'll go ahead and call it uh, data Excel. This is gonna be whatever you want the Google Doc to be named. This is not too important. We're gonna to continue here. We're gonna test this step. And actually I did mess up here. I needed to actually identify a specific folder. So let me go ahead and hit action here again. This folder, make sure not to choose the folder that you drag the PDF in. If you choose the same folder, it's gonna create a loop. Therefore, when you drag a PDF, it's gonna create a, a doc in that folder. Therefore you're triggering it again. So like, it's just gonna create a loop. You don't wanna do that. So make sure to choose a separate folder here. We're gonna do uh, the folder of, well, let's see what our initial folder was here real quick, PDF sheets, okay. So the separate folder we're gonna do here is going to be the, let me go to the top here, uh, sheet made. 
I'm going to go ahead and continue here. And now we're going to go ahead and retest this step here. If I come over to sheet made, we should see a Google Doc appear here. Okay, so there we go. I go ahead and open this up here. And this is the PDF we just had, but in Google Doc form. Now, yes, the formatting is a little off, but it's not too important because as in the AI model, they don't care about formatting and whether it looks aesthetically pleasing. All they care about is all this data that is associated with this Google Doc. And, you know, everything relevant that we care about is found on this Google Doc. So proceeding from here, we can jump back over and we'll go ahead and use a code block. Purpose of this code block is to grab all that data that's associated with that Google Doc. To do that, we're going to run some JavaScript. We're going to continue here. And if you're familiar with this channel or you've seen our other PDF tutorials, we're going to use a very well-known code block that we've used in a ton of other tutorials. This code block is very important as it allows us to grab data found in files. So I'm going to text here. Text is going to be uh, what we're grabbing or essentially what we want to grab out of a underlying file here. And then the variable we're going to input is going to be the file. But don't choose file exists but not shown. We want to do file uh, file text as that's all we care about in this context file text exists but not shown we're going to continue here that 3000 is important so if you're dealing with longer files you'd want to increase that that's basically the max amount of output of words you want to output in this context we're willing to take 3000 words obviously most invoices are probably not that large I'm going to hit test step here and we should get the entire underlying invoice all right there we go so we got a result here this is all the data associated with that google doc that was from that PDF. From here, we're gonna go ahead and show you a couple things. The first thing I wanna show you is the ability just to make it uh, formatted so it looks nice. And then the second thing I'm gonna show you is how do we identify specific things we want from the output, therefore pushing it towards that Excel sheet. So let's go ahead and go at our Google Sheets. I've had people get mad at me for saying Excel and Google Sheets. Just when I say it, just think of it as a unilateral term for you know the columns and rows. Uh, from here, I'm going to say chat GPT and let's go ahead and start it off by just formatting this so it looks nice. And then we're going to go ahead and nitpick the specific data points we care about. And we might actually be able to get away with one AI prompt here. So make sure to choose an event of conversation. We're going to say we received uh, an invoice for our company, period. And if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I typically tell you to use as minimum amount of words as possible in prompts. But when you're dealing with prompts that are just very minimalistic to begin with, like one sentence just to give you context, you don't have to just say invoice. You can give a little bit more context. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the results here. And just so we can make it very clear, we're gonna say invoice data. I'm gonna say generate, we say generate the invoice in the following format. Semicolon. So what do we care about the invoice? That is up to you and your discretion. For us, we care about all three of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can just try to do this real quick copy this paste this okay perfect so we're gonna go ahead and just enter here or shift return and for me all i care about are the following variables total due date service complete and stuff of this nature if you care about more add more if you care about less add less but for me that's all i care about so what i'm going to do here though is i'm going to add semicolons here you could in theory use a gbt 3.5 model if you want to i like using for for you know some stuff like this so it's just making sure that it's you know, it's more um, forgiving in this context. So I'm gonna, uh, come, uh, so service complete, we can just actually delete that because we actually don't know if it's complete yet. We'll just assume it's no. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and up the model to GBT4 here and get a consistent output of invo data. Memory key, random 32 character string, uh, ensures consistent outputs at scale. So when this output comes out, if it looks good and I like it, then I know for the next 10 outputs, it'll look the same. So let's go and see if we like this output or if we need to reproctor it. I like it, looks perfect. Um, that's actually exactly what I wanted. So just to gut check this entire process here, as you see, we have the build two is James Brown. Build two, James Brown. Also provide an address invoice number. We have right up here, grab the correct invoice number. Uh, total is 750 USD, 750 USD. Um, test email is going to be the customer's email. So we know that the uh, it's accurate, it's grabbing the right information, it wasn't grabbing my information, and it was able to interpret it correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this to format data. So now the fun begins. We're gonna go ahead and add a uh, formatter block here. So there is gonna be a formatter block that we're gonna go ahead and use in the context of text. Formatters, formatter block is like the dumbed down version of a 3.5 of ChatGPT. It is more cost-effective because essentially what a formatter block is is just JavaScript or code 
but their way of making it look nicer as a UI. So you use formatter blocks for a very, very simple tasks. Because in theory, what I'm about to do right now, I could have ChatGPT do to an extent, but actually not true, not completely true because of the fact that I actually am splitting it based off data points. So sometimes formatter blocks actually are important um, in the context of splitting up data blocks. Um, as I mean, what I mean by that essentially is as you see from this output, uh, if I come down here, this is all congested into one data point. Therefore, if I try to put that separate it into different data points for the columns in the spreadsheet, it wouldn't work out well. So we're going to go ahead and use a formatted block for that specific context. For the input, we're going to use chat GBT reply. We're going to do a separator. And this is just the dictation that Zapier uses. So we're going to do new line. If you want to understand more ways you can format data, you can kind of hit more here and then check out their documentation. We're going to do a segment index here. Now, just as reference, if you hit first, it would only output the first line. If you hit second, only output the second line. For us, typically you're gonna do all and all as separate fields. It's gonna allow us to identify each one of these as a specific data point. There we go. Now, if we wanna take this one step further here, in theory, what I could do here is I could add another formatter block that removes invoice number, removes bill two, but maybe let's just try to go ahead and reproctor this a little bit different. We're gonna say format, don't have the titles of the categories. Just output the requested values. This might be too vague for ChatGPT to understand, but I'm actually curious if this works. And essentially what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to remove this from the output, but keep the formatting of invoice number, bill to stuff like that. So since we're doing a new type of output we're looking for, we're gonna go ahead and refresh that memory key to invoice data one. I had to retest this step and I'm looking for this output again, but with no invoice number, no bill to no customer. So let's see. And there we go. Perfect though. Okay. So now when I reformat this and you'll see why that was important later, we we'll retest this and now we're just getting this. Okay. There we go. It's actually a lot simpler. What I'm about to show you is when I was originally going to approach this topic, I thought this was going to be a little bit difficult, um, but it's actually a lot simpler than I thought. I'm going to go ahead and create a new row here using that data. Therefore, every time I upload a spreadsheet, it's going to automatically put it in there. If you want a more complex way of handling data, and maybe the data you're handling requires uh, multiple instances or multiple rows, go ahead and check out that video right there. It's called Automating Data Entry, I believe. It's 40 minutes long. That gets into an even more complex version of how to handle data when it comes to a PDF. So check that out if you are interested in more complex versions of dealing with Excel or Google Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and do an event of create spreadsheet row. I'm gonna continue here. I'm gonna choose my uh, courses account here. I'm gonna hit continue again. And this is where we're just gonna do some easy drag and drop input values. So our spreadsheet is the spreadsheet we already created here, which was customer invoices example. Our worksheet is gonna be sheet one. So since we've already identified the rows in our Google sheet here, we don't have to necessarily create any new rows. So we can go ahead and go our text formatter we know app port one is going to be our invoice number because we consisted it or had consistent outputs of our output using the memory key. We know our bill two is going to be output two. We know that our customer email is going to be the email. So we can kind of proceed from here and every single one of these outputs as scale, if you had 50 invoices is going to ensure that they stay in the right category. So I'm going to go ahead and continue here and then total, we're going to go ahead and put 750. And I went, ahead, I went ahead and left the service complete as a row here because I wanted to show you that also on top of variable points, you can actually add a fixed text here. So in theory, we're going to add no here. So every single time an invoice is added, obviously it's going to say no, but now you know how to add fixed text as well in this context. So if I hit continue here and I test this step, watch this pop. Boom. There we go. So we got our line here. And if I went ahead and shrunk this a little bit, you can see all the relevant information. You know, maybe I want an output where it doesn't give the address. Maybe I want a separate column for the address. But as you see, we have successfully, oh, I went ahead and messed up. <laughs> it is not 750s. The due date is not 750. That is not the correct one. Come down here. November 20th is the due date. If I hit continue again, test this step again. There we go. So now we got the correct due date. And as you'll notice, it didn't overlap. It didn't replace the underlying row. Therefore, every time you would upload or drag a PDF, it would automatically create a new row for the underlying information associated with that PDF. Therefore, what we just learned today is how to successfully automatically take invoice PDFs and put them to our Google Sheet. And all it requires you to do 
is simply drag a PDF into a Google Drive folder. And as I said in the beginning of this tutorial, you can actually take that one step further here, depending on the invoice software you use, if it actually integrates with Zapier or has the ability for API documentation, you could in theory take it one step further here and have it where a invoice is completed, it would trigger this entire flow as well. But without further ado, make sure to leave a like if you felt value in today's video. Um, I will say that as of the last three days, or just in general on this channel, I found a ton of demand when it comes to how to manipulate PDFs in the context of data and using AI. So seems like that's a pretty big pain point. I'm hoping if you found this interesting and you wanna learn more about that specific context, really check out uh, the PDF videos we have on this channel. Cause I think this is kind of the, the top of, I think this covers most of the context when it comes to automation and PDFs. Let me know in the comments if there's any other topic uh, around this realm or just in general, any other automation you're interested in seeing. As if you're familiar with this channel, I do I do read the comments and I do see either requests or suggestions for different automations and I build them out in videos like this. You know, therefore everyone can learn together and we can really start leveraging AI better. But without further ado, if you liked what you saw, you can check out a playlist at the end here where I am diving into all 5,000 apps by Zapier, showing how AI integrates every single one. I'm also going to leave a video at the end here. And if you've gotten this far, it, you probably already know this, so you probably don't have to watch this one. But if you don't, um, I might leave a video at the end where it shows essentially how to integrate Zapier and OpenAI and just everything fundamental to understand the process and pricing in that context. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.